All right, cool. So let's see if uh, let's see if that was available. Come on here in a minute, and then we will answer your guys' questions. We will talk about stuff. Uh, I, I know Bao took an L today. I think at least earlier in the day, and he wanted to talk about it specifically. So we will definitely talk about that. Bao's always got such wonderful lessons for you guys to learn. I swear to God, dude, the guy the guy's a monster at teaching. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude, Red Box. What do you think happened to Red Box, bro? It's Red Box for God's sakes. I, I, I don't know what happened, but I heard in passing that they're dog shit. That's <laughs> this is guys. This is my point about speculative companies, man. You got to be, this is not Facebook. This is not PayPal. This is, this, this is, ugh, God dang. People wonder why they take L's on quote unquote, big caps. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Alex. All right. Alex is around. Nice. Alex, one sec, buddy. Let's rant, let's rant on Redbox, buddy. <laughs> I just almost typed in Redbox. I was looking for Alex. I typed in Redbox. Oh, shit. Yo, you hear me? What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Bro, people wondering why they're losing and they invest in shit like Redbox, man. Come on. Oh, shit. You hear me? I got, I got logged out. Yeah, I can hear you, buddy. All right. Give me one second. I'm going to post my loss of the day and I'm going to explain what the fuck happened. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Bao just texted. He's coming in in one minute. He's uh, he's getting a drink, but he said it's non liquor. I don't know if I believe him on that. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Bao, put down the Hennessy. <laughs> yeah, Alex, let's talk about it, man. Not every day we win as day traders, guys. So some days it is very good to look within and see why. That's the point. <laughs> Tay, aren't we? Tay's like, aren't we all? Kev, what's up, buddy? All right, let's see. Hopefully you guys traded good today or you've been trading good lately. It has been a little bit slower in red box or in red box in small caps. That's okay. It's okay. You gotta be patient. I've been cheating on vodka with tequila for a while. Travers, if you're cheating on your Tito's vodka, it better be reposado. For a guy that doesn't drink anymore. For okay. Tequila, all right. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. Let us talk. Okay. So, all right. This is the biggest loss of the year for me, man. Uh, it's yeah. pretty horrible, pretty terrible. Um, I hate everything about it, but uh, at the end of the day, bro, it's all my fault, right? It's not the algo's fault. It's not the hedge funds fault. It's not the institution's fault. It's pretty much all my fault, man. And basically my thought process was this. So coming into the trade, this was a stock that was pumped, you know, for the last week, it went to $11. And basically what happened was I thought to myself, all right, the PR today was that they were getting, it's pretty much like they're getting out of bankruptcy. Yeah. Uh, and some company is going to save them out of bankruptcy and the company is going to save them out of bankruptcy by offering them a low price per share type of thing. Close, less than a dollar share is what they're offering these people, right? And in my mind, when this thing bounced to $4, I was like, oh my God, this is a pretty much a, an amazing case scenario where, um, where if it's at $4 and it's going to go to $1, I mean, it's yeah. pretty much an all in type of thing. And for me personally, man, for me personally, I oversized, I got too biased and I pretty much stopped out at the top and I lost a bunch of money, man. So it Damn. sucks. I, I'm sorry, man. Dude, this is Alex. This is the first time I'm seeing it today, bro. I was so backed up on back end where I didn't even fucking see us till now, man. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't even know you took a big L today. Damn. Yeah, man, it fucking sucks. But That's I mean, it's, it's, the thing is, at the end of the day, it's it's all my fault because I got too biased. I <clears> oversized. <throat> I thought that this move was going to happen. The move that's happening right now, I thought yeah. it was going to happen in the morning. But instead, it kind of reversed. And it was very odd because right in the morning, there was not many borrows on the stock, which had me feeling really confident. And then as the wow. morning continued... All of a sudden, there was someone lending out massive amounts of shares, which contributed to the squeeze, man. 
Jeez, this is really ugly too. Cause this is the first time I've seen Redbox talked about in dude years, literally like, like I, I haven't even heard this name in years. And when you see something like this guys, as Alex just said it perfectly, man, you know, this is a shell of a, like, this is a terrible company guys. If, look at this daily chart. So when you go in and you go to like, say a 20 day chart and you hear like, well, you basically hear that the company's taking one of the biggest L's ever, but someone's kind of saving a basically a bankrupt company is, oh man, it's who could have suspected such a massive squeeze and so quickly, especially when you think the share count are, are very limited. Yeah, it was, it was, it was rough, man. This is pretty much my biggest loss of the year. It sucks. You know, I'm still, yeah, still I'm up sorry, on the year, obviously, which is good. It's just very frustrating that I let myself let a loss balloon into such epic proportions because of my own bias. And it is a lesson for me. It is a lesson for everyone it is sometimes yeah. it takes scenarios like this to be able to come back down to reality. And, you know, it sucks, but yeah, it's, it's not, it's not really the end of the world. I mean, it sucks now seeing it at 290, you know, which is well, because that's I your whole thought. plan, right? That was your Yeah, seriously. I mean, basically, the plan was working to a T until everything really changed, man. So I mean, yeah, I, mean, I just wanted to kind of come on here and just explain what was happening. So if you want to bring Bao on here, too, I know he could kind of explain too. But yeah, man, yeah, I think I think Bao's here, actually. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah, man, same fucking boat. This is a plan. I thought I was gonna short at four bucks and cover it here, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was this was this was what I was expecting. Short at four bucks and cover down here. Instead, it went parabolic all the way up to green. And I was explaining this in the main room today. Is bro, there's I've traded probably ten thousand stocks over the years, and over the ten thousand stocks I've traded, I've probably seen two stocks that go from minus sixty percent on the day to green. Uh, and now it's back down to minus 50%. So this yeah, is something that launch bad. Seriously. This is something that like the I, probability of it happening is just as good as me winning the lottery. Right. It's I, not I probable, say, but I, it could happen. I, I, hey, Alex, I think I see, I seen this a lot of times more than you've seen it. Um, this is what happened, man. I mean, hindsight, obviously it's so fucking easy when we look at back and we got fucked, but this was a coordinated move, man. This is not a normal thing. This is this is a true manipulated rig stock. I, I don't use that word often, guys. You never hear me call a stock manipulated because every stock's manipulated, but this one's a true rig stock. You can tell, okay? These are the fucking, it's like all of a sudden it tanked out of nowhere. And these, and I read that these filings that they had was old. It's not like anything new. Um, and so there is something going on. I'm, I don't want to speculate, but when you see shit like this, this is the shit that the SEC should step into because someone's trying to dump shares. And in order to dump fucking crazy amount of shares, they've already done the math. They know what the float is. They, they probably own most of the float. And to get the fuck out, they do this Jeez. to trap shorts. And so this is the signal that I told the room and that I told Alex, because the, the low case were fucking expensive, man. 14 cents. Red show. Remember, this is red show too. And then it went down to 11 cents. So I located 11 cents. I'm like, okay, cool. I finally got some cheaper share. And then the moment it started getting squeezed and it, and it kind of, the squeeze kind of stopped around $4. I saw a massive amount of shares available to be located for 7 cents. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let me get yeah. another fucking, let me get another 5,000 shares, right? <laughs> yeah. And so and then after those shares got all located out and people started slamming it at $4 because $4 is the fucking line you want to short, right? $4 is our fucking magic price, guys. When we woke, when I woke up, it was like a three bucks. I'm like, and it went down to 250. I'm like, fuck, please go back to four bucks. I would go all in, right? And that's, just, but the thing is couldn't go all in because we had no shares. And so remember what we always said, um, in order for a stock to squeeze, you need a ton of shorts. And that's exactly what happened. And so I always talk about this. I think I, I talked about this so many times that, that the, it's it, the rigging in the sense of like, where did all these fucking shares come out from to be located for seven cents? So yes, the yes. funds, whoever needed to liquidate, whoever is setting up this massive short squeeze, yep. did it themselves. They lent out the shares at that moment. And then boom, that's exactly what happened. Crazy. Um, the thing is this, guys. I mean, you cannot predict this shit. The only thing you can do is keep to your risk management. As much as you love in blackjack, 20, a 20 hand, a 20 hand gets beat by 21 all the time, guys, right? It seems like every time you, you, you place a giant bet and you get 20, you're celebrating, the dealer pulls a 21. 
So this is a good example of having fucking risk management because this seems like too weird. It's like, how would this thing be fucking 87 cents buyout when it's trading at three bucks? If it was a true buyout, the price will go there instantaneously and flatline, guys. So this is a good lesson for all of us not to be fucking greedy. We see this fucking thing that says 87 the ratio 87 cents where the fuck it is, right, guys? And so we thought it's going to down to dollar. How the fuck? Think about this, man. Every every fund knows this news, knows this news before us, knows these filings before us. If it was truly going to be at 87 cents, this thing would open up at fucking one dollar or less. Yeah, probably open at 50 cents, dude. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. That entire squeeze up was their exit and they got the exit. And once they got the exit, there's no more bid, which is why I came back down to reality. And this is, and it's, it's crazy because yes, these stocks are manipulated, but sometimes to the degree that they're manipulated, like today, it, like Val says, the only thing that's going to save us is our stocks. And, you know, this could have been a lot worse if it kept continuing to seven, eight, nine. Um, but I got, stopped out and that's pretty much it and it's horrible it sucks it's annoying but well and alex let, let me ask you bro on on the micro yes you did lose today but bro what are you still up 1.3 million on the year seriously yeah, something like that bro it doesn't the money is not the issue bro it's the process yeah, don't I, use the cushion game guys i deviated man i deviated and because i deviated i lost so the way to fix that yep. is to fix the deviation definitely so you, oh so nice pal yeah. Hey, hey, the thing is, Alex, you you know, me and you threw all fucking risks out the window because we were so, so greedy about that one dollar. And we're like, we knew we know something that they, they don't. But in, yeah. in dogs, no, but we Val, Val, you're right. This was it. Do that four dollar line. Because look, I even drew this circle before you even post your chart. Bro, this is where you this is where you, you shorten. You win nine times out of ten. This is it, dude. Because like, the pre-market, is... the pre-market bounce was four dollars. This is so fucking controlled, man. Jeez. Yeah, and this is the move we were looking for. So, I mean, obviously, hindsight's easy. Just fucking hold. But it's not It's not that easy all the time, man. So, that's this is, frustrating. Uh, but what else the can one we do? Thing, the one thing for the future, guys, the one thing is if it's a fucking buyout and it's $4, the stock's going to be at $1 if it's fucking real buyout. It, it would not be fucking training this. Because think about this, man. If, if Goldman Sachs fucking knows it's going to be bought out for a dollar, they would put a, a billion shares on the offer. And and do the arbitration on that, right? Yep. Crazy. So I mean, this uh, this is basically fuck, man. We all got greedy as fuck uh, because we've been I've been winning, man. You know, as, as much as Alex has been winning too, I, you know, like Alex has been like waiting, waiting for this big opportunity. So that's what it is, Alex. Me and you. Yeah. So so like for me, I've been winning, and so I'm like fuck, man. I'm gonna fucking you know I, I can't go wrong. Um, and then Alex is like waiting for the big score. He's been just you know, making 500,000 that you see being very, very in tune with the process. And it, I think it's just, you're itching to get into a big trade, bro. That's yeah, bro. I mean, that's it. That's, that's all it is. And it sucks to see where it came down to now, but there's nothing we could do except keep trading and waiting. And so you saw my chart guys. I fucking, I had a max loss trigger. The only thing that saves me nowadays is, uh, it <laughs> saves it for myself, man. I mean, I fuck it. I, I'd be in the same situation as Alex. I, I swear. If I did not have a fucking max day loss, auto liquidation and liquidated amount, I can't get back in. And that's the thing. It's, it sucks that it went down, but if I got back in, I'd be my fucking cover at six bucks, dude. Who the fuck knows? That'd be even worse, right? So seriously, you know, it, it took me out at fucking 480, whatever the fuck it was. And I was like, when it hit $6, I was like, fuck, that was the best stop ever. And now I'm looking back, well, fuck, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah. So you can't, you can't, you can't kind of, the thing is, man, uh, you set your stops and then you, you set it in the point where it's a manageable loss guys. And that's the whole key. If you are not fucking putting in max daily loss, you're, you know, you're fucked. Alex, Alex is okay. Cause he's up a ton of money. doesn't matter what it is. You know, everyone has a different type of fucking loss. You know, that, that might be not big for him, but for you it's crippling. Um, yeah. So, so you is. want to set your max daily loss, guys. I'm telling you right now. I don't give a fuck if it triggers and you cover at the top like I did and you cry for the rest of the day, but it's a manageable fucking loss. I'll make this shit back tomorrow, you know? Dude, live to fight another day, guys. This is what we preach every single week. Like, Alex, yes, this is a paper cut for him, but guess what? He's going to come back stronger than ever. Like, that's the point of protecting yourself. So that this one out of 10 trade, while it gets you, the other nine aren't because it's back to process. You saved yourself. It's like, dude, because 
Because like Bell, think about this doing like a drives. If you don't cut it, you're dead. Dude. You're gone. It doesn't matter how much money you make a year. Your career is over. This goes to a $50, $60 on a short squeeze. Like we've seen two times a year for the last 10 years. I mean, the, like, the, the, prop, the proper way to trade is you always have to have a, a hard stop in place, right? Uh, I use mental stops in, in the morning. I, and then I've always gotten in trouble, guys. Seriously, you know, I, I make money and then one day, boom, big ass runner comes and I'm fucking, I'm stubborn, right? Right. And so what's saving me is this max daily loss, guys. So this max daily loss is the fucking safety net. You drunk, why the fuck you do? You're drunk driving, and you don't kill someone. That's it. If you turn this shit off, you're gonna fucking one day drive drunk and kill someone. Yeah. Is it gonna be the symbolism, song? guys, is your account. And on you know, when we're talking about the money, it's it's just an analogy because you can use analogies like that, but you guys gotta be careful, man. You guys gotta be careful when you don't think it's about stuff. losing days, guys. They are inevitable, they're gonna happen always. What I learned from losing days is if you walk away with a lesson from the losing day and apply that lesson, you are better off than 90% of traders. If you just chalk up Definitely. the losing day and don't do anything about it, you are bound to keep repeating the same cycle. So my lesson today was about being too biased. My lesson today was about oversizing. And by understanding that and using that to improve, I am not so as upset as I was before because now I'm going to create a new process around this and ideally never deal with it again. Well, yeah. and, and like, Alex, let me, let me say something because I was actually talking to someone about this yesterday is, look, the, the one real bright side of any of this and what we're talking about today, guys, is like, look, you, you go in big caps and the market's crumbling and everybody's worried about a recession and bear market. That doesn't mean opportunity is not still here. Guys, whether you made money on RDBX day or you lost money, there's still opportunity in small caps line to line with process. So just because the world's ending tomorrow does not mean you can't still make money or make this a career or siphon a paycheck every day out of the market. There's still a ton of freaking opportunity. Yeah, man. This is one loss. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everybody's acting like the stock market's going to dry up tomorrow and there's going to be food shortages. I'm like, everybody pump Dude, the brakes and still make day. a living. <clears throat> to be honest, man, if you set your stops right, yeah, max any loss. Yeah, I'm not going to remember this shit next week, dude. It's just another fucking loss. No big deal. Uh, it's a manageable loss. If you put, so if you lose, if you lost, man, and you cannot afford that loss, this is the time for you to figure out what the fuck you're doing wrong with your risk management. Call a broker, set the max lay loss on a lower price. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of the time people are setting the max lay loss way too fucking high, man. You know, make sure you don't call the broker to get rid of the max lay loss either. You should, I'm telling you, two days of average should be your max lay loss. Absolutely, man. Because you know what, man? This is just one trade out of a ton of trades. This is not the last trade in the fucking world. You don't That's, need to make back your money on your life, this fucking trade. Yeah, everybody's chicken littling and worrying about the future of the world. I'm like, dude, they're still up, they're still line to line, bro. What are you doing? You can still get a membership at MIC and learn how to make a freaking living, whether you know the economy goes to shit or not. And once again, man, the takeaway is the, the I was stupid, man. I think I, I just the thing is this, guys. I woke up late too, man, and do research. I just like, oh fuck, I missed I missed a fucking V A R U and. And to me, our DBX was a makeup trade. So everybody has a different reason why they they lose or why they oversize. But for me, you know, yeah. Alex has his reason. But the, I woke up today. I was not fucking prepared. When I saw Alex short at four bucks, when, when I got to my desk, Alex was already in at four dollars, and his average is three fifty or something like that. And I'm like, fuck. And the stock was like two eighty. It's like, please get back to three fifty. And that's when you saw me. You go back to my chart, start scaling at three fifty. So thank God that I didn't fucking chase the bottom. Yeah, because I, my plan was this, guys. So this is the stupidity of me. My plan was to go three fifty to four dollars. When four dollars broke, I said fuck, and then I found those seven cents locates, bro. And that's oh, no. <laughs> you see all those fucking ads from the seven cent locates. <laughs> Where did I find all those locates from? I'm like, holy fuck! <laughs> so what was saving me before was twelve cents to locate this shit, dude. I'm like, that's a lot of fucking money. So I'm like, I'm just going to look at a little bit. And if I'm right, I will add to a winner. So that was my original plan until all these seven cent locates dropped. And like, I must locate a ton of them now. They might be gone <laughs> because it's red show, man. The fact that this red show fucked me over because I can't recycle my shares. So I know that if I use the shares, it's gone. I have to pay another fucking 12 cents to locate. Fuck that. 
So when I saw seven cents, I was like, okay, uh, well, I'm going to use the seven cents so I can fucking recycle and, and scalp around that 12 cent core. And surely enough, man, I got fucking fooled. I got tricked. And that's exactly what they're planning. So keep that in mind, guys. Two things, two things to learn from this. Number one, read the fucking news, figure out why. And then when you hear shit like buyout and you think you think you know better than the fucking system. No, you don't. You're the dumbest fucking guy on earth. Me. I mean, like, how the fuck? I mean, you don't think these fucking institutions know if this thing's going to be bought out for a dollar or 80 cents? You yes. think it's that fucking easy? So that's number one. Don't think you're better than the system, guys. Everybody... Don't think you're better than Nancy Pelosi, guys. Come on. <laughs> and, and the number two is like, fuck, dude. Keep to the process. The process has, says that if the, pre, if the pre-market high gets broken, you must fucking stop out and take it easy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then and then you see the new locates getting flooded. I'm like, why the fuck all of a sudden a ton of seven cents? Now you know why, dude. Simple Jack just said it best on YouTube. He goes, I'm willing to get a membership. I'm sick of losing money. Guys, this is the point, man. You need a membership before you <clears throat> lose all your money in Dogecoin or Xerox or talking about long in Verizon. That you don't just do shit like that, man, because you, you don't you can't predict the future, right? So you well, want to skill thing is that, man, if, for the guys on YouTube that are not MIC. You see, we're the, we're the only ones that fucking show this loss. I'm pretty sure no one on Twitter, no one's fucking even going to admit that they fucking trade this shit for a loser. Nope. Because you know what, man? This is just one trade I've made for us. This is no big fucking deal. Not many people talk about their 70K loss, man. Seriously. Yeah, thank God I didn't lose that much. But <laughs> <that's> <laughs> no. I'm like, fuck. I, it could have been me, man. I'm telling you, it could have been me. I fucking, look at, look at my fucking trade again, man. Pull that up. So I ran out of low kids at four dollars as planned. Tosh, look at that. Pull that yeah, up. Yeah, seriously, man. That you yeah. That shit. I ran well, out and, of, and well, then and, I found more seven cents. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna add to a loser. Well, and bow, dude, you're you are not wrong, bro. I know you so well because you're my freaking brother these days. But dude, I've seen you wake up early and get FOMO right here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank God you woke up late today. <laughs> you would have so doubled that loss, dude. I know, man. Fuck. I was, I was like, I was like, fuck. This shit's headed to a dollar. This is so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, dude, you waking up late saved you probably 10 G's. Oh my god, dude. So I was like, I mean, it fucking pisses me off, but I'm like, you know what, man? I'm looking at my loss, it's not that bad. So it's it's not that bad when we consider the grand scheme of everything. You have a process where you come back tomorrow and you hit again and you do it right and you make money. And then you do it the next day, you make money, you do it the next day, you make money. And the day you lose, like today, you set stops, you don't look back, and you continue on and you have a trading. Career. I had I had two max losses. I will show you the other one later on BWV. And this is my my um hold on, guys. This is my fucking uh overall today, how much I lost. All in all, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm yeah, that's good. not bad at all, man. That's Seriously. fucking amazing. I mean, oh, I, that's not me, bad. I was a fucking winner, dude. I, I had two max lady losses that I I fucking only lost this much, dude. Yeah, so. that's that's not bad, Val. That's really not. So the, the one thing I'm telling you, the one thing that saved me is the locate cost. The locates were cheaper, <laughs> but it doesn't matter if the locates are cheaper because I would have sized up quicker and got max they lost trigger sooner. <laughs> yeah. So that the whole thing is, you know, people talk about how to take a, to, uh, how to take a proper loss. People always say, Oh, get stop out. When you, when you, the trade is no longer valid. What the fuck does that fucking mean? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? No valid. Look at the fucking shit. It's fucking RDBX is fucking valid. It's just, I got it too fucking early, dude. Absolutely. Fucking, the moment if we had to, if I had sustained, and if I had scaled into this stock like I usually do, because I, I am way overly biased. I'm fucking excited. There was no locates, and so I just slammed everything, right? But if I had just slowly scaled like I usually do, and I don't hit the max daily loss, I'd be banking right now. Yeah. It would, hit, it, it would fucking hit six, crater down, and you good shit. Well, and again, Bow, it's like over the years, it's like how many times have you actually held on to something like this, didn't take a loss, and you get bailed out eight times out of 10, and then do the two, the 20% of the time that you did, you're you're closing out of position at 16, and you lost freaking half a million. Like, dude, it's like, it's all relative. And, and the thing, guys, the, the, the thing that I I'm also need to be aware of, so remember, you learn everything, right? If you lose or win each day, you should review your trades. So I was, I, I could have stopped out. I wanted to stop out. But I can't because I paid so much money for the fucking locates and they're red show. So I can't fucking use them again. If I stop out, 
If I stop out, I'll fuck. There's no more shares. Yeah. So me, me being cheap on 12 cents locate cost me the max daily loss. Well, and it's funny with you, Val, specifically, because I, I do have a feeling, though, that you would have nailed it if it wasn't Reg Show right here. I have a, like, this is your bread and butter, bro, right yep. here. If it wasn't Reg Show and I, I was able to, I fucking, I, I fucking hammer at the next level. I know. That's, I was going to say this, this top out right here through red to green. I don't know, man. I think you would have killed I, it. I would have right taken, I would have taken another max that you lost at $6. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would have scaled everything in at five dollars, guys. Oh right? shit! Five to five fifty and stop out at six. So, but let's just say hindsight, Huru, you would have made it all back <laughs> <laughs> if, if I still had money in my account to make it back. <laughs> so I'm telling you guys, man, you need to set your stop, man. Oh shit! I want to go and slap everybody. Who doesn't have a max daily loss. If, if okay. you if you are a new trader, guys, you must, or I will kick you out of the club. If you're experienced like Alex, then you do what the fuck you want to do because you know what to do. But if you are new and you're inconsistent, or even if you're consistent and you're fucking lack of discipline, Alex has a lot of discipline, man. He has a big account. He can fucking put in another fucking hundred grand of losses in there and be okay. Yeah, the numbers you know? are relative, guys. Remember that. So, so, but for you guys, man, if fucking all you have is the thing with Alex and I is we keep a relatively small account towards uh, compared to our net worth. And so if I fucking lose 100% of my account, I can still reload it tomorrow. Definitely. Um, can you do the same? That's the thing. So so don't talk about how much is your max that you lost, all that. It's, I mean, dude, if you're a billionaire, then it's different, right? Or you, it, but if all you have is your fucking $30,000 life savings into the stock account, then you you better be fucking setting your max that you lost at a very small number. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly right, man. And the thing, the thing is, this guy, uh, I triggered the max daily loss. There's two ways to do it. I told the broker when I opened the, uh, when, when, when we started um, using them, is that uh, once I hit the max daily loss, do not let me go back into the symbol. <laughs> <laughs> because, Joe, you, know you imagine you hit that shit and you come back into the symbol and you fucking get fucked again. So, Dude, that's so funny. Dude. So, the thing is also, guys, there's multiple max daily loss. What I did was I set it to, Max day loss per ticker, not the count. So that's why I had two. I, I this is a rare thing. I don't think I've ever had this, man. I had two fucking max day loss on two different tickers, and they're both <laughs> just scammy, dude. <laughs> dude, like, this one's even more embarrassing, dude. Holy Bro, everybody fuck. on everybody on Twitter calling like manipulated agenda. They can see my account, they know who I am. I mean, dude, so so look at this shit. Look at the last fucking giant ass. Oh, BWV. God yeah. damn, dude. The oh, absolute top, bro. Look at oh, where no. I'm <laughs> We say it all the time, bro. Some days we're in the matrix and some days we're in the fucking gutter. Dude, dude. they just put... Dude, oh, dude, dude. this is <laughs> the, the absolute worst cover of all time, but it was not me covering, dude. It was the fucking <laughs> auto liquidator. Yeah. Oh. And then they, they covered and then they instantaneously tanked all my shares down to the bottom, bro. That's an antithesis to the top tick. <laughs> That's like Good Lord, dude. Look at I that. know. That's, about, that's a fucking giant ass penis up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's the head going into my. <laughs> and then, dude. Oh my God! Look at that, dude. I don't think it can get any worse of a cover, bro. Oh shit! Nah, you see all? You see that giant ass penis head on top? That's that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> oh, oh, you are ridiculous, bro. Right, guys. Look at that, dude. I'm looking at that. I was like, I don't think there. I don't think that's. It. Even if I fucking tried, bro, to do this, couldn't couldn't lose I better. Couldn't if you tried. Do it. I, I could not fucking get. I top ticked the cover, bro. Well, and Bal, that that's what I was saying. Like, if you would have woken up super early and seen RDBX, bro, you would have started in way under, like you did on this one, because that was some FOMO right there, bro. This this motherfucker was eight cents to locate too. What so, were the what were the pivots on this bad boy today? Uh, so today I spent yeah. a ton. Of, I paid money to get sodomized. <laughs> yeah, now you, you and I'm not I'm not gay. No offense to gay guys, I I don't like that shit. So <laughs> some of people go, oh, I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> We're just giving analogies, guys. Oh man, <laughs> fuck, dude. Some days you screw the market. Some days the market screws you, man. If dude, you can't find humor, I'm in this I'm, I'm looking at BWV. I'm like, I I you can't get worse trade than this. <laughs> Absolute fucking top tick. The cover, dude. Top kick the short, uh, the stop loss. Unbelievable. Top the stop. And then they fall. Look at that, dude. One dollar tanked. 
right after they covered it. Bro, Val's, Val's broker, look at this. The guy's a success trader looking at this like, this can't be Val's chart. <laughs> I, dude, bro, if someone showed me this, I wouldn't fucking believe it. <laughs> like, what, the, <laughs> what, the, what kind of trading are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> your future self comes back, Val. This is going to be your trade tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, dude, yeah. man, fuck well, we can learn from it, right? Like, this is why we're doing this, guys. Dude, putting on a webinar like this is so you guys can learn from this stuff. But like I said, guys, I had max A loss set per ticker. I can still trade other tickers. So I traded well the other tickers to make back most of my losses. I'm, I'm under 4,000. Knock on wood, guys. So, yeah. I mean, it could be worse, right? Man, that's a, that's a win. That's a win. Dude, this is, this is a, to me, I'm like, holy fuck. I fucking, this is a monster good day for me. <laughs> Two max losses and then, you know. Oh, man. And, and this is the thing about those pivot points, guys. Is like, look, if Bao didn't give it a phone and just waited for that outer pivot line, he would have been golden on this thing. Dude, but the thing is like, dude, how the, f dude, this thing was at fucking $5, dude. I know. That's, how that's the fuck do you think it go back to $7, dude? How the fuck? This is, this, look at this chart, man. On basically day three, too. It's just dude, such a good move. This is my, what, dude, I, my, I was dreaming last night about putting my entire account into the short. Yeah, <laughs> That's, Look at that's, this dog, dude. What the fuck? No, that's crazy, man. Because it's it's this is like three. I, I ran out of middle fingers, bro. You know the, the fuck you pattern? Yeah. Like three three middle fingers, bro. I've never seen a three middle finger having to put toes up and stuff. Yeah, it's like this is like what was it? What is that? The shaka? The fucking man. Let me see. What's that? The shaka. Where was the fucking that that little thing? Yeah. The fucking surfer shit. The surfer? I have no idea what you're saying, man. This is a different move in the bedroom, too. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of like the three middle finger. I don't I think uh, YouTube is not gonna let us post this video. <laughs> That's a different technique they've taught. <laughs> <laughs> You've taught me so much through the years since <laughs> still learning. Uh, uh, you know what, man? In, in trading guys it's losses are expected uh losses yeah. come uh, the biggest losses i'm telling you come after your biggest wins or after a big winning streak because you 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 let down your guard you 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 deviate you play the cushion game <sighs> that's the thing man when you're fucking winning you don't expect this shit and so that's why you always need to have the fucking max day loss guys. definitely 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 man this goes for any style of play, guys. Swing trading, options, big caps, investing, every style of putting money into the markets. Any style, no matter what time frame, you got to know how to get out or protect your account. Yeah, I wish I could do this for relationships, marriages, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> then you then you really will have conquered life. I know, man. I dad death lied that last fucking relationship. I was telling my dad today, dude, he's in a failing relationship. And that they, they, he proposed to her, but they didn't get married because they really thought it out. And they were like doing some real estate together. I said, dad, you dumb fuck. You dodged a third marriage. I said, you should be counting your lucky strikes and stars. He's like, boy, you're right, man. I, could, I said, you didn't learn the first two times. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we learn. Hey, but it gets cheaper with hey, it gets cheaper with each divorce. He has only like a yeah, you have less quarter of his money. money. He only has a quarter of his money left. There's no fucking, <laughs> he's taking her money, bro. A after the third divorce, I'm fucking all in, bro. I'm gonna marry fucking five more times. Get get her money. So after the second divorce, the guy actually cleans up. Yeah, because half of a half of a half, bro. Bro, <laughs> they just re they just cycled out all the shorts, man. Oh, seriously, dude. Oh my and then god. What's you end up marrying a well, <laughs> you hope you marry a woman that divorced three times because she took half of half of half and now she has like 150 <laughs> percent you know? see we teach you guys everything about life and trading how could you not want to sign up for mic <laughs> women are smart, alex, alex is taking notes he's he's about to get his first marriage he's all like, oh, fuck <laughs> <laughs> i haven't watched the videos on that one yet <laughs> counselor marriage dude my best friend's married at what he's my age so he's 32 and we've been friends for 17 years he's been married for like 10 years he's like dude don't ever get married <laughs> uh, i'll show you a good trade though i'll show you a good trade <laughs> it's compound growth <laughs> here this is uh i was doing well today so i was like fuck i thought today was gonna be a nice monster day but <laughs> day so CSSE is the uh, the company that's supposedly buying Redbox. Oh my I, god! I shorted the fuck out of this. 
and I gave it all back to Redbox. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I bought Redbox, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say seriously. So I mean, I was like, "What the fuck?" Okay, so the CSSE is the company buying Redbox, and I'm like, something doesn't make fucking sense to me. So it's weird, right? Usually, like, I mean, this thing tanked big time, and then I'm like, "Why the fuck is RDBX going up?" And I mean, I really don't know, man. This is above my pay grade. I swear. I'm like, dude, this is just too weird. I've seen shit like this before. And it's usually it's manipulated by a fund that has most of the shares locked in. Um, whoever had control of the flow can do this shit. That's, that's God, nice. and this is just your stereotypical, man, just perfect resistance scale point two. They just played like to a T. That's the thing, guys. These are the charts where nine times out of 10, you win. But that one time on RDB, RDBX Redbox, you just get smoked because, th- dude, this played, per- this confirmed, conformed exactly the chart. Exactly. Yeah, dude. So you notice what I did on CSSC that's fucking awesome. Every, every fucking bounce, I'm all over it. Yeah, I'm seriously. Once back, this breaks so. down the first time, then it's just back up to resistance again. Jeez. Okay, let's let me, let me look up RDBX Redbox again. Let me show you something interesting, guys. Remember all this hindsight shit, obviously, but uh, yeah, but it's still a process that we can look at and talk about. I, I so this is from Flash SEC. I don't know how accurate this is. Yeah, Bong the Redbox the movies. Yes. <clears throat> look at this weird ass shit, dude. Jeez, what? Yeah, that don't make sense. I really don't know. Oh, this is a totally controlled weird move. And we rarely ever blame on control and like manipulation, but this this was one of those ones. Well, I mean, yeah, I we ever the fuck. institutions own 129%. I mean, that's not weird actually. It's just, you know, it's something weird, man. So I'm looking at I'm, I'm like when I lose like this, I'm looking back to see if I can find any signals for the next time, guys. <laughs> Bro, 60% of the time it works every time. <laughs> this yep. is like that logic. So I'm going to Yahoo now. Let me see. Invest. Uh, see, look at this, guys. Okay, this is Yahoo right here. I'm going to, put, I'm going to pull up Yahoo. Yeah, this is from... Okay, I'm, going to, I'm going to show you something interesting. Look at the percent held by institutions. The fuck's going on? What the hell? That's really fucking weird. Dude, what? Wow, the writing was on the wall, but you really have to... Like look. the opposite of a fucking... The short float being overtaken. Yeah, serious. So, I mean, look at the shares float, 10 million, right? Um, and so based off on the Yahoo, a quarter of the float shorted. So this is a prime fucking candidate for short squeeze. Man. I'm pretty sure a fucking institution owns a ton of the shit. Um, so this is something to keep in mind for next time when you see weird shit like this. Look up this float held by institutions and... Maybe next time we will avoid being killed. <laughs> Dude, you li- you guys should literally just screenshot this truly. Like that's a screen, like just as a reminder. I, I, this is a billion dollar, this is a million dollar lesson for you guys right here, guys. This is the oh. shit that when you lose, man, you see how I'm looking at all this to find a correlation for next time. Man, Bao basically rented a four thousand dollar movie. Damn. <laughs> if I ever see a red box, bro, I'm gonna fucking egg that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude, I, dude, I, I, I ran into a red box like the other week, uh, outside of a. Wait, were you drunk or did you actually run into a red box? This was li- this was literally like at one a.m. or midnight. He was drunk. <laughs> I had to I had to go buy some shit at CVS, uh, because DoorDash closed <laughs> like one a.m. and there was this fucking chick in a mini skirt standing by a red box. <laughs> no way. And I'm like looking at her, and it's like she looks like a fucking uh, like a worker girl, right? I'm like, who the fuck is running Red Box at midnight? <laughs> I'm not joking, dude. I'm like, fuck. I think that's the new thing, man. I'm like, dude, anybody has someone, someone that's renting a DVD, dude. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, man, anyway, that's a Red Box. <laughs> dude, that's a different type of box. We don't want to be in. Oh my god, Dave's gonna kill us, dude. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my Gotta god! Light my day, guys. Alex is gonna audience, blow. Does the audience have any questions, guys? We could keep Alex is gonna up. blow up a red box and actually be called a terrorist, dude. Dude, I, every time I see, I'm, I'm gonna fucking avoid that shit like a plague, man. Gosh, are there any questions on YouTube? That we yeah, you know what, guys, have been talking a lot on YouTube. Let me kind of siphon out some questions. Sorry, guys, we just wanted to kind of rant on this for a little bit. Um, uh, me and my ex used to get a red box. Blah, blah, blah. I want to join it. MIC. Oh, uh, I know I, I want to join it. MIC. How long would it take me to make $200 every single day from meme man on YouTube? 
There that depends no, on you. There's no, there is no guarantees in trading, guys. <coughs> Let me show you something interesting before I answer that, guys. Let me show you this. Okay. This is very good. I want yeah, to Val's talk. really good at talking about this specifically. Yeah, I want to talk about this. So um, take a look at this. <laughs> uh, this is a... Uh, this is what you guys on uh, on um, YouTube, that's not MIC, need to be aware of, okay? Check this out. So I'm going to post this on the webinar. You can post that. So this comes from an actual fucking guru. I call it a guru. It's a fake guru. Things he's, so they're selling courses like this, okay? One-on-one -on -one mentoring, four or one-hour private for $2,000 fucking dollars. Jeez. Okay? And then uh, let me show you this. I, I should really block the name of the motherfucker, but should I? Yeah. I'm <laughs> this motherfucker. He's dude. probably in MIC, whoever it is. Yeah. Uh, 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 don't take out the ugly face, too. Okay. Here we go. So, this is a real guy on Twitter. This is going to answer your question that you asked. Read the. Uh, We'll just read the bottom part. Stock market. I will be your personal tutor. If you're an experienced trader, I will teach you to trade live, answer questions, turn your weaknesses into strength. My goal is turning you a full-time trader by the end of this program. The fucking program has four fucking one-hour calls. He wants you to quit your job to become a full-time day trader by four calls. Oh my god! <laughs> and you pay him two thousand dollars. So if you ask that question, how long would it take to make two hundred dollars consistently a day? He would say. Join my fucking program. After my fucking program, you can become a full-time trader. Quit your fucking job now. <laughs> so the answer is this, guys. Trading is not guaranteed. How long would it take for you to become a professional poker player? It depends on your skill. Who knows? You know, some people learn it very quickly. Some people never learn it. But you have to ask yourself, do you have the discipline and the passion? You cannot You try it, man. You cannot... If anybody gives you a time frame, they're a fucking scammer. Guys. Yeah, I was just going to say, anybody that deals in absolutes is a scam artist, 100%. Like, look at look at me and Alex today. When you look at us, you're like, fuck, I don't want to become a day trader at all. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to make consistently lose that much money, right? So, but the, the thing is, it's, it's possible, guys. You, you, the thing is, it's if you put the proper time into it is fucking definitely possible two hundred dollars in my opinion this is to me very easy for me anyways but you know two hundred dollars is just a couple of scalps guys yeah. one thousand shares ten cents is a hundred dollars i could do that in my sleep okay um yeah. the problem is this when you make a hundred dollars two hundred dollars you want to make five hundred then you want to make a thousand and get greedy so if you are realistic with your goals and you're a hard worker $200, in my opinion, is very, very doable. And how long? It's up to you. This is why we have the annual program. Uh, if you, I mean, think about this, guys. Uh, you go to vocational school, welding school, all that shit. How long does that, those programs take? But people, for some reason, think that they can go and become a day trader in fucking four phone calls. <laughs> you yeah. know? I mean, that's the thing. It's like you have to have realistic expectations, guys. It's, it, trading is a learned vocational skill. <clears throat> Mentored. If you have a mentor, you can bypass the learning curve significantly. It's like fucking welding. I'm telling you right now, go weld on your own, dude. Try to learn to weld. You don't have to fucking weld. But if you have a mentor there helping you fucking weld, it, it's much quicker. Yep. And some people will never become a welder because it's too hot. They don't have the, the muscle to do it or whatever the hell it may be, right? The eye coordination doesn't matter. So when, you know, but but the average, I'm telling you, there's really no average because I'm going to tell you something. It's like- Everybody's different. Everybody's, dude, it's, dude, it's, it's, it's like saying, it's like saying, did everybody get COVID? It's like, no, dude, everybody's got different immune systems. Everybody's got different age. But like, I always say it like this, Bao, is we've already proven MIC works to the general public. All you have to do is read our 
thousands of freaking non-paid yeah, actors. It's, it's, the, it's the discipline, guys. It, it's it, up now to it's you. Like, yeah. It's, it, dude, what's your work ethic? What's your discipline? Are you comfortable being a risk taker for a living? Are you comfortable putting money on the line? Like, did your parents raise you to think abundantly or scarce mindset? Do you overthink everything in life? Are you an emotional? Pro- like, you're going to weigh all this out as you go. But dude, MIC process already proved it works. Now it's up to you. What's your work ethic? How much, how much time you want to put in to learn this? How bad do you want it? Because it's doable, but it's not doable to the idiot that watches one video every year and says, why am I losing money still? Uh, because this is actually quite complex. But once you learn it, it's easy, it's simple. It's never easy because you got to put in the work, but it's simple. I'm, but it's like, dude, every day for me. I mean, oh. I Bro, it's like a day is fucking no, nothing. For anybody that gives an absolute, like, here's exactly how to make $200 a day, that's like saying the entire world is Republicans or the entire world is Democrats. Like, everybody's different, bro. You, my thing is get, get into it. Try it out yourself, guys. Exactly. You never know. You may become the best day trader of all time. You won't know. Yeah, yeah you could be the next Alex for all we know, but you're not going to know until you try. <laughs> Chances might be a little slim to be the next Alex. He's quite an outlier. <laughs> I will say. Well, I think you can't do worse than him today, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kick him while he's down. That's a good one. I'm, I'm, helping, I'm helping the new guys get this, this is what it's like being Val's tab partner, by the way. <laughs> oh, man. You, know, you, sure you, you got to laugh at yourself, bro. I lost you, so you got to laugh at yourself. You know, so. Oh, shit. Guys, questions. Hit us with the questions right now in chat if you're a member, and then uh, I'm gonna try to find any. Oh, avoid guys. The guys are on fucking YouTube. Avoid these scammers that that fucking like tell you that to quit your job. Do not quit your job. Keep your job. Having a job will help speed up your learning because you're not stressed out. You're not stressed to pay bills. Guys, we're we're the only people out there, the only community on earth saying no matter how much money you make in trading, keep your freaking job. Why not have two multiple streams of income when all you need technically to make a full-time living in trading or even just supplemental is the first hour? When you trade from 9.30 Eastern to 10.30 and you have an edge in shorting or longing because that's when all the retail buyers are there and giving you the biggest edge, you have to understand that's all you need to be a day trader. You don't need to sit in front of the computer and obsess and pull out your hair all day and look at every freaking decimal tick on the freaking level two. But you don't need all that. So why not go live a life outside of screens? Once this becomes like a reflex, it becomes a reflex. You just get on, make a little bit of money, then go to your job. Like, we're not telling you all this marketing bullshit. Dude, how to grow a small account. Like, this is a great video for that, man. Yeah, seriously. Back when uh, people were wearing masks, though. <clears throat> but um, speaking of jobs, is MIC hiring in this market? Val, what was that? Um, do you want to talk about the career? Yeah, let me, let me send this. We, yeah. we are not hiring. Uh, let me see. We're not personally, but someone who we affiliate with is. So one of our partners, which which the brokers, let me show you the link, guys. Yeah. And if you're from Florida, it's a big um, it's a big opportunity for you. They're they're located in Miami. So I'm gonna post the link right now. Um, I welcome everybody to just apply. Yep, guys, this is for Success Trader. Yeah, it's uh, SuccessTrader.com/slash/career. Dude, send in your resume. I'm pretty sure these public dump room have positions for you. <laughs> they way you can pump their shit all over. But we, 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 we don't really don't do that stuff. So, but. Oh, shit. I, th- I think Val's hiring a personal assistant, Tay. I think that's, I think, but that's more personal. <laughs> she has to be in a red hey, box hey, at 12 a.m. Tay is like, <laughs> Tay's like, I want to give you my job. <laughs> Seriously. I'm going to get paid. I'm gonna get paid. <laughs> That needs a personal assistant like the red box girl at 1 a.m. <clears throat> <Can't afford that. laughs> didn't you say, oh, dude, I never forgot this. I'm still cracking up about this five years later. But didn't you say that like five years ago before MIC was created, you made all this money in trading and you just like basically drank for a living all day. You like hired a, like a 20 year old kid to just drive you around a bar. I, uh, <laughs> dude, I, I literally for two years, what I did was I hired one of my best friends. His job was to solely keep me alive. Oh my God. I, I went through a bad breakup then i dude I, this is when i was making way too much money bro and then i stopped working i was like fuck man you know what i mean and so i literally basically i gave him my credit cards my cash my car keys and he kept me alive the problem was then later on i need a drinking buddy he started drinking with me and so i had a party <laughs> not joking <laughs> my 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 guy was supposed to protect i got drunk and he started getting drunk with me and that's oh my not work, so. god dude 
I still remember that after five years. I'm like that, like whatever. I think he was like you said he was younger, right? Like 27 year old kid was just paid good money just to like 22 year old kid. Yeah, 22 year old kid. He's just driving fucking Ferraris and fancy cars. <laughs> <laughs> so all the girls thought that was him, but it was really me. Driving but, golf carts all around the country, clubs getting <laughs> wasted. <laughs> Yeah, those are a lot. So that's the thing, guys. Trading is very up and down. It's not about how much you make, guys. I was I was the top of my game. And it's just fucking when when you have no purpose, you know, when when you realize money is an empty kind of game where there's no ending. Imagine playing a video game with no ending. It's like after a fucking few years, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, where where's the end? All you're trying to do is level up, and it's like there's no end. And so when I realized that fuck dude i wasn't as good as i thought i'm looking like other guys making 100 million dollars a year i'm like fuck this shit i will never reach that <laughs> i know and they're looking at the billionaires thinking man we suck you know like there's levels to this guys it's it's never ending right and so that's how mic was formed um to help you guys and you know this i'm thinking i'm a much better individual than i was back then so oh my gosh but i didn't i didn't realize it actually started as like something like really real i thought you just hired like a guy to drink with your oh no no, 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 no <laughs> wow that's is literally to fucking drive me around so I don't get a DUI and to fucking to make sure that I did not fucking die. <laughs> oh my god, I thought it was more on a comedy basis. You made it funny, but oh my oh, gosh. Oh yeah. Okay, no. This webinar went dark. Let's go back to a. Uh, Let's go back to fun. <laughs> As a new member, do you advise uh, to paper trade the daily watch list until we get confident trading real money? Uh, do we have to pick our stocks or pick ones from Alex and the moderators? Uh, okay, so this is a good thing. I want to I want to mention something about paper trading. Um, there's two ways to paper trade. I always paper trade every single day. I do it in my head. Okay, you can write on a piece of paper, whatever, right? And that's just a, to learn. But to get, but paper trading doesn't really work because it doesn't mimic emotions. Uh, you have to have skin in the game. And so this is where Success Trader comes in. Uh, success Trader. Uh, with the MIC route, you get rebated back. So instead of using a fixed simulator, you can now actually use a small shares, like 100 shares, 50 shares, five shares, 10 shares, whatever you want. And it basically is paper trading, but it's real money, is live executions. And you don't have to pay the, the, the commissions because the it offsets, right? You, you pay, yeah. you, so you add to liquidity using the route. And so basically commissions offset it by the, the rebate. So now you can pick, this is a, this is a revolutionary guys. You, you join success trader, but you have to be over PDT 30,000 or more. Right. Um, but now you, instead of paper trading, you fucking trade with small signs, dude. And you'll, 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 you'll see, Oh fuck. I'm down $5. I'm down 10 bucks. That's, you know, if you can't afford to lose five, 10 bucks then maybe you shouldn't trade. Right. Yeah. Um, so, but it kind of mimics, I'm telling you right now, bills are not instantaneous. It mimics the real market because you're trading the real market. And so then you can level up from those 50 shares to 100 shares, 200 shares as you become more comfortable. So that would be my recommendation uh, because if you are stuck paper trading for too long, you will never make it because you, you, there is no emotion there. And then you think the, the fields are instantaneous. They're not. Yeah, they're, t they're actually terrible once you start using market orders in real money versus on fake. <laughs> You know, he is pattern day trader is a USA rule. If you're under 25,000, you can only day trade three times a week. Yeah, three round trips. Five so if you are, if you are under PDT, under 25,000, my advice is to take your money less 10,000. Let's say you have 5,000 or 10,000, open up two accounts. That way you have six trades. Well, and, and here's the thing, guys, in the beginning, you should never try to trade something yourself because you don't even know what you're looking for. So, yeah, you should treat the watch list like a freaking Bible, at least in the beginning, because Alex is a multi seven figure year trader because he's so precise with what he's looking for. So you should. So I'm not I, saying I, I copy. You, so I'm but, talking about the watch list. OK, the watch list is by no end, uh, the, by, by no means like the, the end all be all Bible. Yeah. Right? But the what the watch list does is a, it's a guide. It's a it's a cheat sheet quick way for you to learn and you learn a couple of ways. Okay. Watch this. You learn stock selection. Uh, 2000 stocks out there. You pull up a scanner. There's so many fucking stocks. How do you know which ones to trade? Right. Yeah. So see if, you, so Alex pull and Tom and a lot of people like Tom, Tom's watch is pretty damn good too. So um, he, uh, he does a stock selection for you. And not only the stock selection, you try to put in your lines, your entries, prices and see if it matches theirs. So you use it as a learning tool guys. Of course, you can use it to cheat and make money, <laughs> you know, um, but 
primarily you use it to learn and you imagine you become more comfortable and you follow the watch list and you, and you get confident like, Oh shit, this shit works. And that's how you level up quickly. That's how you cut the learning curve guys. Definitely. So we discovered that by putting out the trading plan, this is different than alerts, right? Alerts is like you sit around fucking the guru fucking says, I'm buying the stock. Everyone chases that shit. No, we put out the watch list an hour before it opens. You have that time to research, to plan, to put in your fucking orders, fancy orders, whatever it may be. So this is not an alert. This is self-sufficiency, but with a guide. Yeah, guys, because because here's here's something that Marksman just said on YouTube, which I really, really want to talk about for a second. He goes, it's weird, man. I am under PDT. I keep funding it every week, but I keep losing money. Marksman, I dealt with this for two fucking years, dude, a million years ago. Here's why. When you are so close to PDT, you're going to trade scared because you're no longer focused on the money anymore. You're focused on the basically the red to green of being above or below PDT. And now it's a psychological price target. So, bro, you either need to break up that account and just fund, you know, three retail accounts where you can have three trades a week, or you need to wait until you get 30 or 40 K. So you can be so above the 25 K mark that you can trade correctly, bro. All of this is mindset, man. And we help with that. That's what you need to understand. You can't just keep funding it a thousand or 2000 over. You need cushion, guys. think you're going to trade good. So the thing is this guys. Okay. If you're close to PDT, and you're barely above that. What you need to do is have a little cushion. You need to have the max a loss. To prevent exactly. You from- you, you are you are risking way too much for your fucking account. That's why you keep going over and under, okay? Yeah, yeah. Save your money so that you have 30000 so you have a $5,000 cushion. Because what happens to this guy? When you're so desperate to fucking trade and you look at your fucking account, I can't lose one more trade. I'll go under PDT. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it because you're going to be- It's like fucking, law of attraction you, you, or something. You will stop out so fucking early and then be right all the time at the end. Dude, you cannot have a trading career trading terrified. Of, of money, a certain level in your money to pay your rent. Like it's just too hard, man. If you're trading from a point of survival, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. You know, it's, it's like, rush. it's like coming to a poker table with the shortest stack. Oh, that's such a good analogy, Bal. Truly that. Yep. That's exactly right. Yeah, man. You gotta, you gotta be in there in a comfortable because like, dude, if you're short stack, all you, all you got is one move all in. <laughs> dude, seriously. Or if somebody with a much bigger stack, you know, goes in the pot and you're like, Oh my God, what do I, do? I have a medium stack, but what do I do? I got to call it like, dude, it's yeah. You're just not thinking clearly, man. There's no like buffer. There's no, there's no wiggle room in your mind. It's mental, it's mental clarity, man. Uh, he said, yeah, it's so weird because when I was funding it like 2K every week and I always do these dumb holding options play or when it goes against it, I would just hold it to zero. But when I had above PDT, I do the stop strategy, like scaling out 20 to 20 shares. That, it, it, it's like we said, man, you have to trade from a point of being comfortable. And it doesn't necessarily mean that if you only have 25,000, you can't trade until you have 30. What I did you know, eight years ago is I, I had 25 and I said, you know what, this is not working. I'm trading like a total wuss. I broke it up in a basically 8,000 per account. I opened up three brokers. I started building an account, actually all of the accounts with um, what's called the, I just didn't know what it was called at the time, but I did the first bounce across three retail account uh, brokerages that I had nine trades every five business days. I didn't give a fuck if I lost 2k on a trade because PDT wasn't even in my mind anymore. That struggle. But then once I got up to 40K, then I combined it into a PDT. And then it was, you know, set from there because now you have that leniency. You have that buffer. But dude, trying to trade a PDT account where you're a sliver over, like a slice of beef over, it just doesn't work, bro. It just doesn't work. Like, we only rant on the stuff that we know, guys. We've been through this like a million times over. <laughs> so um, after the futures trade, I'm going back to basic stocks only, small shares building consistency through risk management. Just Pick one thing and get good at it, man. Don't spread yourself thin across everything. Small caps, options, big caps. You got to get good at something. And you got to stick with something that you're comfortable with doing or you're just spreading yourself too slim, you know? That's what I got to say about that, but. Val, uh, what do you think? Yep. <laughs> Pretty spot on, right? I mean, yeah, there's not much to it. Uh, so you send the market order before open. You put limit order with a hard stop. Do you change your trade in flight or, um, okay. So ra- wait, 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 where is this question? YouTube? Ra- Radicant, the most recent question. Oh, oh, sorry. So you send the orders before you put orders with hard stop. Do you change your trade in flight or either? So it looks like you just joined my friend. 
Yeah, brand new. Have you have you seen the accelerator? Have you have you started watching the videos? So let's uh let's post what Steven's always posting uh, uh the onboarding um. So when you just join, what what do you get, uh, Alex? Can you post that thing that uh, that Steven sends, like the order, what to do, watch the accelerator? Yeah, the onboarding program. Let me yep. find the link. And I can also let's, go to the let's, website. Let's bring that up, guys. <clears throat> I can also post this, guys. Okay. Um, this is important, guys. Do not skip steps. Remember, man, if you skip a fucking step, <laughs> you, you, you're just asking for it. Um, so make sure you uh, think of this as a... Uh, Stephen also posts that somewhere. So let me see. Let me find. It. But the, the okay, good. So the, the th so what I call a fancy order is all it is is a. So the best trades, guys, or the trades, the best way to plan a trade is before you even get into the stock. So yeah. Do not fucking randomly get into stock because you see someone talking about it. You plan the trade. A plan includes where to enter, where to exit. Okay, that's very important because when you're clear minded, you can think clearly you're not getting scared so you I, so my fantasy orders i put in before it gets there because that's my kind of like the fancy price if i feel i'm pretty fucking sure that i'm gonna win um if it doesn't reach it <laughs> it doesn't reach it you know what i'm saying yeah uh, and, it, and it depends on how far the stock goes down if the stock does not reach my price i'm not going to change it it's going to be there but if the stock tanks below where it started, I will then move down my price. So just because it did not hit my price doesn't mean I will change my price. I will change my price only if the levels, the lines drop. Yeah, you got to be very careful about just changing your plan because you feel like just changing your plan. That, that's kind of what Bao is saying right there. So, you know, it's, it's trading is fight or flight, right? But you have to pre-plan and stick with that plan. 99% of the time, right? It's it's all in the pre-plan, like Val said, guys. And like I'm telling you guys, I, I don't change my price just because I don't hit. If I don't hit, I'll fucking, I don't chase. Yep. But if it breaks down levels and it becomes a backside, then I will move my prices down so that when it bounces, just like see, just like this stock. See? Damn. I, oh my God. Sorry to cut you off, but I just, man, I didn't even realize Tesla went to seven. Oh my God. Wow, Tesla is nearing the 600s today. Jesus. This market is brutal. You own Tesla? <laughs> no, no. I, I just have a little bit of Tesla, but I didn't, man, I didn't, I didn't think that that would tank that much. Dude, my son, my, my son was a stock genius in our family. He bought one share and it split <laughs> Tesla. And That's he was awesome. Up, dude, he got two fucking shares. It was over a thousand dollars each share. I'm like, how the fuck? It was actually two thousand. I think it was up like four. I think he had like four thousand. Like, where the fuck did you get this money from? You know, bro. He he learned the best lesson that I'm still trying to learn at 32. Man, no money, no honey. <laughs> so so that's the thing, guys. So, dude, uh, everybody that was up on Tesla, and they were up a lot. Potentially, a lot of people now are fucking hurting because they did not have a plan. The planning before they get into Tesla, they need to have a plan where that's to fine. exit. Most of these guys, when they buy a stock, they don't want to sell ever. So they watch their gains evaporate. Now they turn a giant winner into a big loser. That's the last thing you ever need. You trade to make money. It depends on your time frame. Obviously, if you're an investor, you can have a longer time frame. But as the stock goes up, you must move up you, your fucking stop. It's called yep. a trailing stop. The last thing you want is to be up a ton and then you end up selling for a fucking loser. So you always have to, so the best time is before you get into the stock to have a fucking plan. The plan includes the exit. Most people only have an exit plan for one or the other, but you need both. One or the other meaning when, when you're up or when you're down. Yep. Their, their exit plan usually when they're down is when they fucking get liquidated out because they're on margin, right? Definitely, definitely. That's not a fucking plan, guys. And guys, anybody, anybody right now that's looking to like buy the quote unquote dip, unless you're dollar cost averaging a very small percentage of what you do normally, I don't think it's time to buy anything right now. I'm just saying like this shit's finally coming. The helium's getting out of the balloon finally, finally on everything. You guys be careful about like buying the dip right now heavily. If you buy a little dip, dollar cost average is very different. That's investing slowly. Uh, so, I mean, we have very different opinions on that kind of bullshit <laughs> uh, this is a 14 bull 14 year bull run guys so i mean my whole thing is if you buy this shit better have a fucking plan a plan yeah. does not mean keep buying till zero okay 
I'm well, depending on what you're buying, right? Like depending on what you're buying. For well, sure. yeah, yeah. If you're buying fucking like um, the blue chips, then you're okay, right? So if, if definitely if you if you want to invest in shit, buy blue chips because you want know, to take a look at that. That shit is you know there's there's a reason, right? Yeah, but, definitely. But uh, be careful, guys. I I don't like to give stock advice. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Um, like guys, people. guys, when you're saying like it's time to buy Tesla right now, wait till I, it like it. Who knows if Tesla doesn't go to three hundred? You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm just saying, be careful about buying right now. Shit's finally, the air is finally coming out of the balloon. Finally. You can see it everywhere in the economy, and it's finally reflecting the stock market for the first time in two years. So just be careful. This is just the beginning, guys. <laughs> I think it's the anybody. beginning of a bear market. Dude, yeah. Dude, look at that. Pull up the fucking spy chart. Dude, here it is right here. 10 year. Pull up the 10 year. Oh, God. Yeah, this is a, what is you guys, this? You guys are, man, you guys are kids, man. I don't even have a dude, you guys, you guys, you guys are fucking kids. I'm telling you. Right Hold now. on, Bell. I'll add one. I, I am like, dude, I'm fucking scared for you guys. You guys never seen a fucking bear market. Yeah, we've literally, yeah. And I'm dude. like, fuck, man. I see people buying this shit. I'm like, well, fuck. Hey, it dropped a little bit. Let me go in. Dude, dude. <laughs> like 10 year this. chart, bro. Yeah, this this is this is a 15 year, man. If I scroll all the way back, look. 15 years, <laughs> holy shit, 2008 spy was trading at 67. <laughs> Jeez. Dude, dude, when was the last time it fucking went down, guys? Oh my dude, God. This shit. Oh my God. You guys, this was the COVID out. drop. This was the COVID drop right here. And guys, remember, this is the index for basically everything. You know, Tesla, NVIDIA, three out of four stocks follow this right here. This is the index of the stock market. So, this is the so there's a couple of spots I see from a technical point, a little bit under 350 and then 250. Oh yeah, dude. Fine, I, I, I think we can get there, Bell. I swear to God. I, I, I think we get, I think if it's a big ass panic, the, the flush is around to 250. I would yeah, I was gonna say I don't think under 300 is nearly out of the question with as much money as we printed and pumped dude, in the market. Two fit just remember 250 was just 2020, two years ago. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude, people people are talking about like freaking Dogecoin right now. Like Dogecoin like guys, like look eight cents. <laughs> Guys, a year ago, yeah, it was a 75 cents, but again, like, <laughs> yikes. Yeah, I, like, fuck, man, this is... This is what we're talking about, man. A lot of money was pumped in, and, and it looks finally like there's some weakness in that, and it's starting to kind of come down. <laughs> Just be careful, guys. Long-term investor, dollar cost averaging, day-to-day, -day, day trader, line to line. Just be careful in all of it. Risk management is so important. It's so freaking um, important. You remember, guys, you don't need a bottom, but you don't need to chase and guess the bottom. Just like you don't need to chase and guess the top when you short. Oh, Tay. So oh, you wait, Tay. You, 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 you wait until the stock bounces when the market confirms that. Then, you know, it's better to be a little late, guys, than to be way too early. Look at Tay with her ultimate flex. Look at her Tesla average. <laughs> Tay is flexing hard right now. Three. Wait, is that, is that pre split or now? Cause that's not so you up hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah. Tay, what what is that exactly? Did you when, my son? when was that? My son. <laughs> my son got pre-split. <laughs> even even if it's just right here, like that's phenomenal. Wait, my son got one share pre-split. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, and he's like ten years old. He's outperforming all of us. Oh my god, dude. It's funny. Oh shit. Of course, he's Bow's spawn. Of course, it's it's of course Bow's spawn is like the best. Trader at 10 years old, there is. Uh, oof, I'm always going big on the front. Yeah, yeah. Be careful, Marksman, about going big on the front side, man. Just wait for backside, bro. Wait, don't just keep funding uh, you know, a couple grand into a freaking account. Get wait until you get 30, 35k, and then wait for backside, man. You're gonna see extreme results, bro. And that's free advice. Wait until you join MIC and really see how to do this. But Guys, do you have any kind of last minute questions? I know the, the bell's about to ring in eight minutes, but any last minute questions on what we talked about today, what's going on, any form right. of trading? I, I am going to hang around if you want to hang out a little bit until I cover C S S E. <laughs> You're still in? Oh, shit. Okay. Let's see. So I'll make back my losses, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Leave that daily. Dude, look at this. Yikes. On uh, which stock? Yeah, it's C S S E, man. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm, I'm still covering it. Yikes. Look at this when a stock is broken, man, I love it. You, you notice when it's broken, I'm fucking scaling that shit. That's your bread and butter, man. That uh, is your bread and butter. Unlike RDBX. 
are German stocks good? Um, while we really have nothing to say specifically about German stocks, are pattern recognition and psychology around being a trader, Simple Jack, is synonymous with all markets, even crypto as well. There's really a language within this um, as it relates to human psychology and price action. I mean, it's is really- Simple Jack German? Uh, don't know. Simple Jack, are you German? Are you are you, German? Yeah, are you German? Or you just, you just saw some shit on CNBC. <laughs> <laughs> you li don't listen to Jim Cramer. That's the last thing you should do. <laughs> Uh, TJ is asking a question about you changing your strategy. I ain't changing shit. I've been training the same way for fucking 20 years. I'm just trying to refine it. I'm holding things longer now because the recession uh, stocks go up not as much anymore and they go down a lot more than you think. Yeah. So I'm holding longer. Uh, the same principles apply. We teach strategies that work in all market conditions, man. When you're, when you're talking about intraday scalping, you know, you if the, for the guys are asking to make two hundred dollars or thousand dollars a day, is this it's very doable, very, 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 very doable scalping. Because think about it, one thousand shares, ten cents is a hundred bucks. Definitely. Is spy an index fund? I'm really confused. bro. Spy is the S P five hundred. It's the U S economy. It's the biggest index. We it's use it as a point of reference for bear market, not to necessarily trade it. Now, are you going to teach your son to trade? I feel like children would do so uh, much better. I'm teaching my son to marry rich. Hell yeah. He's going to go take some old ladies, half of her money. No money, <laughs> no honey. <laughs> yep. Uh, you trained this kid good. Seriously, bro. All the mistakes that we made or didn't do, the lost opportunity, he's marrying rich. Oh, man, that's so funny, dude. Just as easy to love a rich person as a poor person. I completely agree. I'd rather cry in a Ferrari. Hey, we're pretty poor. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather cry in my sugar mama's Ferrari. <laughs> Susan. Oh shit. Oh, uh, I, got a, I, got, I got a video to put close to you guys. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, man, I'm gonna post a video. Uh, for a guy that lost it, I'm fucking feeling pretty well, man. I think because I'm I'm like, dude, I got saved on the max loss trigger. I think that's why I'm happy, man. Yeah. Well, no, Val, let's be, let's be honest, bro. Dude, so, you, so let me let me post this before. Hold on. Just bro, you lose two max losses and come out with a 4K loss. That's a win for you, man. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like under 3,000 losses. <laughs> That's a win, buddy. That's a win. So here, take a look at this. Okay, I'm going to post this. That's um, like a bottle service night. Come on. Hold on one sec. Uh, some of my best trades are the ones I win big, but trades I realized I was wrong took the are loss. Are not the ones. Some of the best trades are not the ones I win big. Oh, not not the ones I win big, but but trades I realized I was wrong, took the loss and avoided a monster loss. Exactly right, dude. I, I, again, man, it's it, it's the dries effect. You know, you you cut it, and and in case it becomes a dries or an LMFA, you're not you don't have a career ender right there. You you can fight the next day. You can come back the next day and do process. Just like Alex will do, just like he's always done after a decent size loss, you know, relative to him or relative to you. And you come back, you go to process and back to what works. What's the oldest guy that you would date? Without money, 31. With money, 57. <laughs> more, more motivation for you guys to make money. <laughs> I'm still in the game, baby. Still in the game, hey, baby. If you're, if you're that girl and watching the video, DM me. Val's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm within the channel. <laughs> DM me, baby. Val's scalping the Sugar Mama channel. Oh, shit. All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up. That's pretty much the close is about to happen. Dude, I'm still, this point. is perfect in time, man. Oh, yeah. I got one more trade to show you. Oh, get your covers in, man. It's too late. You yeah. milked it already. What more can you take from this? Dude, I... Once I clear my mind on that fucking loss, I'm telling you, man, the worst losses are the ones that you keep fucking holding on and it distracts you from all the easier trade. So the sooner you cut your fucking loser, the quicker you make the money back by trading the proper stocks. Definitely. Definitely. Hate, this is the problem with bag holding, guys. You're missing out on everything else. Opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is massive. It's a big, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, guys, just as a last kind of uh, reference, if you like this webinar, if you want to become a member, any questions, um, you know, email, you can DM or you can text directly. 
every now and then a text does not get delivered. It, it's something where with my business line, it happens. Please email simultaneous. We'll get your questions answered. Uh, you can even book a call if you need to at the top right of the website. I'll just show you guys one more time. It's actually right here. Um, book a call. Book a call. Let's talk. CYN is not a first red day. Sky H is not a first red day. You need multiple days. This is like up one day, guys. Definitely. One day is not a first red day. Dude, this was a fun But it's a low-hanging fruit, though. CYN, the low case were way too expensive, so I couldn't get it. Definitely. All right, guys, we'll see you in after hours next week, huh? Maybe Bow will post some more videos on Gold Diggers. <laughs> yeah, man. Later, guys. Alex, okay. go get a steak, yeah, man, man, and a massage, and don't think about the loss, buddy. Yep. See you guys. Catch you next week.